we look at how a diver combines a single breath and precision technique in the world of free diving. It kind of goes against the norm to hold your breath, you know? Most people like breathing. You have to be a little bit insane, I think. Freediving is anything you do underwater on breath holes. So um, if you're talking about competitive freediving, it means holding your breath for as long as possible or swimming as far as you can underwater or going as deep as you can. But you can also do it for fun, like I do underwater photography, but all on breath holes. You can go without food for a month. You can go without water for days. Throughout breathing, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes, people tend to get a little bit freaked out about that. So you also have to have a mentality of being quite relaxed. People who panic, um, the first thing they do is kind of like, they lose control over their breath. The best free divers in the world can hold their breath for up to 12 minutes and dive to depths of over 130 meters. So it's vital they have an understanding of the effect that it has on their body. In the classroom, we're looking at a bit of the, the science behind free diving. Uh, so we'll look at a little bit more detail about the physics and physiology. We've got lots of oxygen conserving dive responses. That's an important thing to learn in order to apply it to the techniques that we're using in deep water. Theoretically, the colder the better that will serve to drop your heart rate. We also have something called a blood shift, where the blood moves from your um, extremities into your core, and it protects the tissue around the lungs. So it's all sort of serving to conserve oxygen and, and protect our bodies whilst we free dive. Doesn't matter which finger. When we're learning, uh, we use something called a pulse oximeter, which measures your oxygen saturation and your heart rate. So you can see the effect of proper breathing techniques to reduce your heart rate and raise your oxygen saturation up to 100%. We'll also look over a few sort of different breathing techniques and some dry breath holds so that you can get your, your breath holds up a little bit longer. And then from the middle part. We use a breathing technique called pranayama, which is based in yoga, and it's a three-part breath. It's something that babies are born with, the ability to use a diaphragmatic breath. And as we grow into adults, we start to become much more rigid and we only use the top part of our chest in order to breathe. So a proper three-part breath, starting with the diaphragm, will really use your whole lung effectively. Large lung capacity can help. It's, it's how you use it. That's much more important. If you have a large lung capacity, but you're a very uptight kind of person and you burn oxygen really fast, you're not going to have a big breath hold. So it's not all about lungs, it's more about what you do with your lungs than what's in them. Equalising your ears. I think it's probably the most challenging thing for most freedivers, because every 10 metres that you, that you descend, you have an extra atmosphere of pressure down there. That means that your 6 litre lung volume at the surface is rapidly, rapidly, rapidly decreasing. So the pressures on your, on your chest and on your ears are, are quite substantial. You need to keep your oxygen for as long as you can, so it's really important not to breathe out until you get to the surface. Freedivers often wear monofins, which are the big single fin like a mermaid tail, and they're extremely powerful. They're really good for swimming distance or if you're swimming really deep. Some freedivers wear a mask, some freedivers are just wearing a nose clip, so it really sort of depends on, on what you want to do and what you want to see down there. The very most important thing about freediving is never ever doing it on your own. You really, really need to have a trained buddy with you because one of the risks associated with freediving and low oxygen is the potential to have a hypoxic blackout. It's a very natural reaction to being low on oxygen. Um, the parts of your brain that start to control motor skills start to get shut off one by one. It feels very much like sort of falling asleep. We have something called a laryngeospasm where the larynx closes um, and it'll stop water from entering the lungs for a small period of time. That then allows your body to lift you out of the water and raise you up to the surface. A lot of people kind of get freaked out by, oh, you're holding your breath and you're underwater and you know, they get panicky about it. 
But once they accept the fact, like, okay, we can actually do this, you know, we can dive as deep as certain dolphins can dive, and we can do it gracefully, and we look beautiful. Ooh. It's a gorgeous sport, and you get to show that to other people. I love that. <laughs>